Hello, in this Android setup video, I'm going to show you how to set up DuckStation on your Android device. This could be a phone, it could be a tablet to play PlayStation 1 games. And just to say, this video is for educational purposes only, it does not condone piracy. First of all, you need an EX file manager. So just search for EX file manager this will be a good little utility to be able to access your phone extract games extract any files that you may have next you will also need well obviously dock station so just install it make sure it's by uh, Senzek that's the developer it's not appearing here but it is Senzek the developer for this emulator next what you want to do and I'll actually add it to the desktop right there you want to go ahead and go to ex file manager it'll probably ask you if you want to go pro or give you an ad and just you know wait till you're able to skip it Okay, so we've skipped that, and uh, so we can click X on that. If he asks you to go pro, just skip it. The X button, you can just skip it. Next, you want to go to the menu button in the top left, go to internal storage. I recommend creating a folder called games. And to do that, you click the three dots in the top and click new, then folder, name it games. In there, create a folder called ROMs. In here, create a folder called PS1. And in here, we'll create one extra folder, and this will be called BIOS. I can't legally show you where to get the BIOS files from, but honestly, if you Google it, they are not too hard to find. Next, what you want to do is actually, I've already got the game and also the BIOS file. So the BIOS file needs to be .bin. If it's in a zip file, then you can extract it. I'll show you how to do that using the game in a second. So you can just keep it pressed, click copy, go back go to games roms ps1 bios and just paste it here that's the bios file done now let's do the game so where's download download if you just keep it pressed you're going to click the three dots click extract to and just select okay so you'll extract the game depending on how big the game is it may take a little longer this is obviously quite a big file this is a dot seven zip file dot seven z ex file manager supports that some file managers don't that's the reason i recommend ex plus it's free it might give you ads and ask you to subscribe but that's it and now in this folder we'll have uh, we'll have a few files here and there'll be a dot bin and there'll be a dot q so what we'll do actually we'll copy this where all the files were we can ignore the other one Go to games, ROMs, PS1, now paste it here. Okay, that's done. Now let's launch up DuckStation. It'll ask you for your language settings. I'm going to just choose device setting. You can change the theme. I'm going to just say follow system. Click next. For GPU renderer, you want to select hardware Vulkan. That will get you the best performance. For internal resolution, I recommend saying 1x, even though it's a emulator of an old console from the 90s see how it works if it works well then up it i know 6x will look good but also work well for aspect ratio i just do auto game native and everything else we can pretty much leave you can do widescreen rendering but you may get some clipping or some cropping on it so puff i would recommend leaving it click next you want to import your bios file so click import and i know for me so this will open up a slightly different you know looking file manager and whatever your device has i'll just go to my fold and games roms ps1 bios and here we go that's been imported click next and you need a game directory now click plus again i'm just gonna go back one go to ps1 use this folder and yes 
and it's scanning subdirectories which is good so it means if there's other folders to organize the files and games which i have for crash bandicoot it'll detect that click next and you can add achievements i'm not interested in that click finish now it's detected our game there's a few more settings you can have a look at so you can go here go to app settings and you can do save state on exit which is really nice so just save wherever you've left off you can do some you know show the cpu usage fps i know it's going to run well so i'm not going to bother with that there's some system stuff as well uh you know again honestly most of it you can leave at the emulation speed you want to leave it as default unless you want to play it really fast maybe for some speed runs for the cpu make sure it's set to a hundred percent of hardware sometimes it sets it to a higher one you don't want that for graphics we've already set this we've already set it to vulcan we've already changed the internal resolution and we can leave you know like i said pretty much all of this as is and in audio for the back end make sure you have something selected and not no again i've had it where it's automatically selecting no sometimes and the game list you can add another game directory you need to make sure you have a memory card created so i'm just going to call this memory card one and yep that's fine so we got a memory card uh, created uh, we've got a bios file everything else is all good we don't need to mess around with anything else we can leave it as is we can try multi-sample anti-aliasing this is great for the jagged edges that you get around on sort of corners and round objects or barrels but this does have a high impact on performance this is definitely something that you only try if you know it's already working a-okay so you can go back and you can go to controller settings i'll just be using the touch screen controls i'm happy with them for now but you can override it so you can click that and if you have a controller connected you can press the button and it will map it what i'll do you can do automatic mapping which works pretty well i'll have separate videos covering how to connect your xbox your playstation you know your different controllers up and how to specifically use them and now that we're done you can just click the game Here we go. So as you can see, the quality is looking really good with up the internal resolution. If you're up in the internal resolution, honestly, most of the time you don't need to increase the anti-aliasing. And that's it again i could play it uh, you know i won't tr even try and play it with these controls one last thing if you click back you can change the disc so if you have a multi-disc game there's some patch codes but you can also save state so if i save that click save slot one now i'm going to uh, exit the game i'm going to relaunch it and if i did a clean boot you'll just launch it from the start takes ages i could go to load state and this will load exactly where i left off so that's great if you're part way through a level you want to skip all the you know loading at the start but that's it if you have any questions feel free to you know subscribe give the video a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions if you're interested or need to know where you need to download certain files and you know let me know what other emulation videos you would like to see next i'm going to do some kind of semi speed runs shorts of this the way i've been doing of super mario 3d line i'm going to go through all the crash bandicoots on ps1 so stay tuned for that and that'll give you an overview of how it's working on the duck station emulator as well peace and i'll see you in the next one take care bye